Hi. Hi. Hi, kids at home. How are you? It's Pastor Porath, and I have some friends with me today. Guys, you want to introduce yourself to the Sunday School Kids at Home? Hi, I'm GP. I am nine years old, and I am in third grade. Hi, my name is Brody, and I am seven years old, and I am in first grade. And I'm Pastor Porath, and I'm not nine, and I'm not seven. I'm really old. And uh, I'm out of school. But we're having Sunday school today, and these guys have joined me to help. Um, we're going to do your Sunday school lesson for this Sunday. Uh, and before we get into that, though, let's pray. And we'll start with Luther's morning prayer. And if you know it at home, you can pray along with us. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right. So our lesson for today, Brody, hold up your lesson so that they can see that fun picture. There. So our lesson for this week is Jesus, who is the Good Shepherd. And that comes from John's Gospel, the 10th chapter. Okay, you can put it down. And uh, Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. Before we start reading from the Bible, though, guys, when you hear shepherd, what do you think about? Um, sheep. Okay, if you have a shepherd, you have sheep, right? They go together. Um, a shepherd without any sheep doesn't have a job. Can you have sheep without a shepherd? No. Well, you can, but... They'll get lost. They're in trouble, aren't they? She sheep really need to have shepherds. Why is that? What, what do shepherds do for sheep? Protect them. Protect them. So um, if you have, you know, a bunch of sheep just out in the pastures or out in the wild, what might be the dangers? What might they have to be protected from? Wolves. Wolves. Yeah. Or lions. Coyotes. Coyotes. Yeah. All of those kinds of things. And so the shepherd protects the sheep. What else does a shepherd do for the sheep? Gives them Make sure they have food and water. So food and water, yep, those are both important things. And a shepherd also guides the sheep. What does that mean that he guides the sheep? Tells them where to go. And why, why does he, so the shepherd kind of moves the sheep around? So they don't get lost. Okay, because they don't, you don't want them to get lost. And sometimes he has to guide them to where the water is so they can drink. Or he might have to guide them to a pasture so that they can eat. Or he might have to guide them to some place like uh, where they might sleep overnight, where they can be protected. All of this reminds me of the 23rd Psalm. And, and if you have uh, your Bibles at home, you can turn to the 23rd Psalm as well. But just listen. Listen while I read this, okay? It's pretty familiar to you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's shepherd language, right? The Lord is my shepherd. And notice, I shall not want. 
It means the, sh the shepherd's going to take care of all of their needs. Yeah. What else does it say? He makes me to lie down in green, green pastures. Green grass. What does that mean? Um, what would a sheep do with green grass? Eat it. Eat it. Yeah. Yeah. And green grass is probably better than brown grass. Right? That's rotten grass. Yeah. Well, it's, so the green grass would be good. And he leads me, and therefore I will fear no evil. You prepare a table before me. Now, I have never seen a sheep sit down at a table to eat, but that's kind of the imagery that's given here. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Shepherd usually has a staff, right? Like in your picture there. It's a big stick, isn't it? What's that for? Guiding the sheep. Guiding the sheep, helping them to go in the right way. What else might it be for? What if the wolf attacks? To scare off the wolf. Scare off the wolf. You might even have to thump the wolf on the head with the stick, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, put that down now. So, we talked about the shepherd. If Jesus is the good shepherd, who are the sheep? People. People, yeah. Just any people? All people? All people. Actually, the sheep, when Jesus talks about him being the good shepherd, the sheep aren't all people, but the sheep are those that are the children of God. So they're, they're those who believe in Jesus. Okay, And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Okay, before we get into John chapter 10 here, I'm going to really test your guys' biblical knowledge and your memory. Do you remember the Old Testament when uh, God led his people Israel through the wilderness to the promised land? They were in Egypt and they were slaves and God rescues them and he brings them through the Red Sea. The Red Sea parted and Moses leads them through the Red Sea and now they're out in the wilderness and they have to make their way back home, back to the promised land. Kids at home, do you remember that? Well, think about that for just a moment. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord was guiding his people, Israel, through the wilderness until they got to the promised land. Or you could think of it this way, until they got to the green pastures. Brody wants to play with the mouse. There's no, there's no mice in the Good Shepherd story. <laughs> so um, as he led them through the wilderness, he was shepherding them, wasn't he? How about food? Is there a lot of food in the wilderness? Did God provide food for his people? Do you remember, JP, what he provided? Bread. Bread. So every morning there was bread or manna. And in the evening, he sent quail into the camp. What else do the sheep need besides food? Water. Water. Was there, is there a lot of water in the wilderness? No. So did they go thirsty and die? Yes. They did? No. Did they have water in the wilderness? Yes. Where did they get it from? Lakes. No, there was no lakes, at least not that I remember. A rock. A rock. Do you normally get water from a rock? No. But that's, that's right, JP. So God provided water through a rock so that his sheep would have water to drink. Now, a shepherd also protects the sheep, too. What, are, what kind of things do you think a sheep would need to be protected from out in the wilderness? What do you guys think? Wolves. Wolves again. Lions. Lions. Tigers. Bears. Oh my. <laughs> when, you, when you read the Old Testament, there was a time when poisonous snakes came into their camp and were biting the people and dying. And they cried out to the Lord for help. And did he deliver them from the snakes? He did. He saved their lives. 
as they're going through the wilderness, they came across a lot of enemies, people of other nations who wanted to fight them. Did, did, did the Lord protect his sheep from them? He did. So when we get to the New Testament and Jesus says that he is the good shepherd, God's people already know what it means that the Lord is my shepherd. So now let's take a look at our Bible reading for this week. We're in John chapter 10, and beginning at verse 1, I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. So you guys can follow along, and you kids at home, you can follow along as well. Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. Do you guys understand what he's saying there? Yes. So it's a little bit difficult in some spots. And, and at home, we might have some younger kids too. So let's just talk about this. First of all, Jesus talks about a sheepfold. What's that? A place where sheep live. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a sheep pen. Mm -hmm. it, it, in these days, it was probably... A wall, a wall made of, of bricks and stone that, that they collected. And so at night, the shepherd would often bring the sheep into a sheepfold. Why would he do that? So to no. protect the sheep so he could go sleep. Right, and so that the sheep can sleep too and they would be safe. So is this part, Brody, is this part of how the shepherd protects the sheep? Yes. Okay. So, um, Jesus is talking about this sheepfold, and so picture in your mind, the sheep are all in there, and they're nice and safe, and Jesus then talks about a thief and a robber. Did you hear that at home? What does the thief or robber do when he comes to the sheepfold? They try to steal the sheep, take the sheep. Well, ultimately, yeah, that's what a thief would do, would steal the sheep, right? How does he get in? Over the wall. Notice, he doesn't come to the door, does he? He tries to sneak in by some other way. He's trying to be sneaky because what he's going to do is not good, is it? But the shepherd, does the shepherd climb over the wall? No. How does the shepherd get in the sheepfold? Through the door. Through the door. He just walks in because the shepherd is supposed to be there, right? And the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. And do they know that voice? Yes. Yeah, the sheep say, yeah, this is my shepherd. This, this guy is the one who protects me. He, he does good for me. And so they listen to his voice and they follow him. They, they, go, they follow him in and out of the sheepfold. And he leads them to the green pasture so that they can eat. But the voice of the thief, do they listen to the voice of the thief? Mm -hmm. No, that's a strange voice. And so they flee. No, I'm, we're not going to follow that guy. Only the shepherd. So Jesus is telling this, but the people that were listening, they didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. So Jesus goes on. Okay, so now I'm going to read verses 7 through 10. And guys, I'll just read it, okay? You can follow along with your eyes, though. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. 
All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus is trying to help us understand this, right? But in this section here, does he say that I am the shepherd? Or is he something else now? I am the door. I am the door. What door? The door to the sheep pen. Yeah. And so what's the point of Jesus being the door? The sheep are supposed to go in and out through the door. They're supposed to go in and out through Jesus. Remember, the sheep listen to Jesus and they follow him. Jesus is the way that they get into safety and protection. And Jesus is the way that they get their water and their food. Or to say it differently, in Jesus they have life. What about the thief? Did the thief come to give the sheep life? They came to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus is the one who keeps us safe from all of that. Okay, let's go on to the next section now. I'm picking up at verse 11. Jesus says, now he actually says it. This is our Bible verse for this lesson too, by the way, kids. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Who is Jesus? The good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. shepherd. What does the good shepherd do for the sheep? Protect take, the sheep. Protect the sheep. Take care of them. Yeah, but now here in these verses, he, he said something a little bit differently. What did he say? I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Protects them. What does that mean? His life. That he lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus was crucified on the cross. So ultimately, this is what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about laying down his life on the cross. And we're going to come back to that in just a minute. But let's, let's first of all think... What would it mean that, that the shepherd would lay down his life for the sheep? Notice how it talked about the wolf comes, right? And the hired hand doesn't care anything about the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, what does the hired man do? Please. He runs away, right? Does he care more about his own life or the life of the sheep? His own, his own life. So he's going to save himself. The good shepherd cares about the lives of the sheep so much that he's going to lay down his life. So if the wolf attacks, what does the good shepherd do? Try to make the wolf run away. Yeah, he's going to step in between. Get out of the way, Brody. The good shepherd's going to get there and, and protect the sheep and get in the way. And you've got to attack me first, and I'm going to beat you with my stick. Okay. Even if the shepherd dies so that the sheep live, that's what the good shepherd does. And Jesus is the good shepherd. That's how much he loves you. And that's what he was doing at the cross then. He was laying down his life to save you. Was Jesus saving you from a wolf? No. But, so when he dies on the cross, what does he save you from? Sin. sin from sin and the the catechism says from sin from death from the power of the devil 
by the way, in the Bible, did you know that the Bible talks about the devil as a wolf? How about a lion? The devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The devil tries to get to the sheep to devour them, but Jesus is the good shepherd who does what? Protects, Protects them. them. Yeah. So let's go to the last section here now. Verse 14. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Look at verse 16 there. Did you hear that language at home? Jesus says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Well, first of all, what's, what's the fold? church. Why does he use, why didn't he just say church? When he uses the word fold, is he talking about the sheep fold, the sheep pen? He is. Remember early on at the very beginning, he talks about the one uh, who tries to sneak into the sheep fold. That's the sheep pen. So Jesus is saying what? And you, JP, you are exactly right. The sheep pen is the church. And the sheep that are inside are who? The people. The people in the church. What, and the people in the church are those who believe in Jesus as their Savior, right? Mm -hmm. But what's he saying? So Jesus is saying, I have other sheep that are not in the fold, in the church. They're, they're out there all by themselves. Is it dangerous out there? No. Mm -hmm. Yes. Remember, the sheepfold is where you're protected. Out there is where the wolves are, or like you like to say, the coyotes. They don't have a shepherd out there leading them and protecting them and laying down their life. Who are those sheep that are outside the sheepfold, outside the church? The not believers. Not believers. So other sheep would be other people, others other than the believers. So notice what Jesus says. I have to bring them too and bring them into my sheepfold, into my church, so that I can be their good shepherd and I can guide them and water them and feed them and protect them. I can do all of these things so that they may have life. Okay, so how do those sheep out there get in to the sheepfold? Believe in Jesus. How do they believe in Jesus? Start going to church. Yeah, but how does that happen? Do they all does, do they just wake up someday and say, you know what, I think I'm going to go to church today. That's not usually how it happens. I'm going to use the, the text here. Jesus says, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. voice. So the good shepherd talks, he speaks, he preaches to those people so that they can hear the voice of the good shepherd. He says things like this, I am the good shepherd. I will take care of all of your needs. I lay down my life so that you might be saved. Come, come into the church. And he leads them into the church. And there's how many, how many flocks then? And how many shepherds? One flock, one shepherd. Well, Jesus is your good shepherd. Kids at home, remember that as well. You can be the one who tells your family and your friends about Jesus, who is the good shepherd, so that they too might come in to the church.
How about if we close with a word of prayer and then we'll join together for the Lord's Prayer? Okay, I'll, I'll pray a prayer first. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have given your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, to be our Good Shepherd, who leads us through this life to the green pastures of heaven. We give you thanks for all of the things that Jesus does for us so that we might have life. In his name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys, for being with me today. Hopefully, we'll be able to do this again. So you guys watch for more of these at-home Sunday school lessons to come. All right, we'll see you. Bye. Bye now. Bye. Keep smiling, boys, until I stop recording.